How can pre-implantation genetic testing be used to improve your fertility outcomes? Hello, and welcome to Fertile Minds. I'm Nikki Kliske, the PGT coordinator and one of the senior embryologists with Queensland Fertility Group. Pre-implantation genetic testing is the term used to describe the process of testing embryos for certain types of genetic conditions. There are different types of tests that can be offered on your embryos. These will depend on whether you have a known genetic condition in the family, or if you carry a disease-causing mutation, or chromosome rearrangement. These types of testing will be discussed in another Fertile Minds video. Embryos can also go through genetic testing to screen for aneuploidy. This type of testing, referred to as PGTA, is used to identify and exclude embryos with the wrong number of chromosomes. So, what is aneuploidy? Aneuploidy refers to the wrong number of chromosomes. We should have 23 pairs of chromosomes. These are numbered from 1 to 22, plus a pair of sex chromosomes, two Xs for a female, and an X and a Y for a male. When an extra or missing chromosome occurs in your embryo, there are three potential outcomes. Firstly, and most commonly, this embryo does not form a pregnancy. If a pregnancy is established, it is highly likely to miscarry. Usually, the miscarriage occurs in the first trimester. Finally, there are a few known chromosomal abnormalities that can carry to term, and a woman can give birth to a baby with disabilities. The most common example of this is Down syndrome. What are the indications for using PGTA? The most common indications for testing your embryos for aneuploidy are advancing maternal age, recurrent miscarriage, or recurrent implantation failure. We know that fertility declines with female age. This decline is a result of chromosomal aneuploidy in the egg. After 36, women are more likely to have embryos with some type of chromosomal abnormality than to create normal embryos. By checking the embryos prior to implantation, it is possible to rule out those embryos that are not going to result in a successful pregnancy. In addition to advancing maternal age, your doctor might discuss PGTA with you if you've had multiple failed embryo transfers or recurrent miscarriages. This can be used as a diagnostic tool to help to understand if the reason for your infertility is related to the embryos or to the endometrial environment. Who would benefit from aneuploidy screening? PGTA won't be right for everyone. Ultimately, it's important to balance up the possible diagnostic benefits and improve time to pregnancy against the risk of an invasive embryo biopsy procedure, embryo freezing, and the additional costs of genetic testing. The number and quality of your embryos will also be significant in determining, determining benefit. How is embryo biopsy performed? Embryo biopsy occurs at the blastocyst stage, on day five or day six of embryo development. A small hole is created in the zona, the shell around the outside of the embryo, and a pipette is inserted through the hole to apply suction to the outer layer of cells, the trophectoderm, which are the pre-placenta cells. This is done at an area of the embryo that is away from the inner cell mass. The ICM are the group of cells that go on to become the baby. A sample of five to 10 cells is removed from the embryo by aspirating it into the biopsy pipette. A laser is then used to separate the biopsied cells from the rest of the embryo. These cells are then transferred to a tiny test tube and transported to the genetics lab for analysis. Embryos are frozen the same day to await the results and can be transferred in a subsequent frozen embryo transfer cycle. Results typically take two to four weeks. What type of information will you receive? Typically, results can be broken down into three categories. NAD or normal will indicate that no chromosomal abnormality has been detected in the embryo biopsy sample. Aneuploid suggests that one or several missing or extra chromosomes have been identified in the biopsy sample. There is also a result called mosaic. A mosaic result suggests that the biopsy sample contains both normal and abnormal cells. It occurs in approximately 5% of biopsied embryos and is not linked to maternal age. Mosaic embryos, if transferred, have a lower rate of pregnancy and a higher rate of miscarriage. However, some mosaic abnormalities, while best avoided, others can be transferred following genetic counselling. It's also possible that the biopsy results may be reported as inconclusive or that no result was possible. This is one of the limitations of working with very small cell samples and small amounts of genetic material. 
If this happens, it may be possible, depending on embryo quality, to thaw and re-biopsy the embryo. However, the risks to the embryo increase with each attempt. What are the risks? Embryo biopsy is an invasive procedure. The embryo needs to be of good quality with a high number of cells to go through the biopsy process without any major compromise. Poorer quality embryos are more likely to be negatively impact by the removal of some cells. As embryos need to be frozen to wait for the test results, a fresh embryo transfer is not possible with a PGTA tested embryo. It is possible to transfer an untested embryo and biopsy any excess embryos. As with untested embryos, not all embryos survive the freeze-thaw process. How accurate is the testing? PGTA is performed on a small sample of cells removed from the embryo, but it is not 100% accurate. Validation studies have suggested that the accuracy is approximately 95%. There's an assumption made that the result received from the sample of cells is representative of the entire embryo. When a full euploid or full aneuploid result is reported, this tends to correlate 98% of the time. When a mosaic embryo is reported, the clinical concordance rate can be as low as 35%. When a pregnancy is achieved from a PGTA tested embryo, prenatal testing is still advised to confirm the result. So how might PGTA improve your fertility outcomes? If you have one of the three above mentioned clinical indications, and a high number of good quality embryos, PGTA testing may improve your time to pregnancy by prioritizing embryos with higher pregnancy potential and excluding embryos that will not result in a pregnancy or may miscarry. If you have low embryo numbers or poorer embryo quality, you should discuss the benefits versus the risks with your doctor before deciding if PGTA testing is right for you. Thank you for taking the time to watch and listen. If you have any further questions, please visit our website or reach out to Queensland Fertility Group for more information. Um, please make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all things fertility. Thank you.